You've heard me mentioning over the series the use of a bunker bomb. Now a bunker bomb was, it wasn't custom made, we used to make them up ourselves. And basically what it was done was the box that the hand grenade actually goes into, or a hand grenade goes into, we just open it up. We'd pack it full of plastic explosive. We'd put it back into the box and we'd bore a hole in the top here, just there. And it would be a part like that. We'd take a hand grenade, take the working parts out of the grenade, and we'd fit them into the hole that we'd bored the bunker bomb. So we had that effect there. Right, let's put it down. So that was the finished product there, right? So when you threw the bomb, it was just the same as throwing in a hand grenade. You'd pull the pin, the working parts would go off, strike the top of the, uh, the, the detonator there, set it off, and this would blow up, but there was no shrapnel. We used it in bunkers, we used it in houses. Now there was a, we did a bunker clearing in Comato when I went there and the, the place had been taken out. We'd finished the operation or we were closing it down and the South African press came along and it was very, very, it was a funny incident. And it, there was something also to be learned from it. The press wanted to see a punker being blown up. And this officer said, I'll do it. He, he wanted to be in the silver movies. So he then went to a bunker, never looked into the bunker, and he set himself up for blowing up this bunker. And I remember he had red hair, bright red hair. And he threw the bunker bomb into the bunker. And he hadn't checked the bunker beforehand. There was explosives in there. And the bunker bomb got off and the explosives got off. It just blew up in the air. And luckily, somehow this guy lived. And he was standing there. And his face was totally black. His red hair was sort of sticking up in the air. You know, like a, like some comic strip. And, you know, you, you could just see the white eyes. And I, I, I just looked and I, had to, I burst out laughing. I had to turn away. And as I say, that's a, a little bunker bomb story. And there was another one where we were taking out a house. And I, my job was to um, to set off the attack and I'd blow a whistle. And uh, one of the guys would bunker bomb the house, we'd get in and take it out. And we were teaching some people a lesson that don't use this town for terrorist activities. So I blew the whistle, one of the guys threw a bunker bomb in and there was mosquito netting on the window that we never noticed and the bunker bomb bounced back out and I was standing on top of a wall and I remember getting <laughs> blown up in the air. It was about four or five feet and I came down and my job then was to run into the house with a parcel of explosives, I think it was 30 kgs, I can't remember, it was big. and. Uh, I ran into the house, went in, pulled the firing mechanism and came out and I didn't realise some of the guys were still alive in the house and I couldn't hear them shooting at me because my ears had gone. We ran away from the house and we counted for 30 seconds and the house just went up. I mean there was 30 kgs of explosive, <laughs> took this house up in the air and all the tiles were all floating down from the air like like rain and were sitting sitting on the ground like this trying to protect our heads. It was just another incident with a with a, a bunker bombing went wrong. Um, on the whole it was a very effective uh, weapon. I, who who brought them out I don't know I, I just know we used them in Rhodesia and we rigged them up ourselves uh, and we did the same in South Africa. As I say, it was something that was rigged up by men. Uh, it wasn't custom made. We just made them ourselves and we got, they were fairly effective.